back to New Rockstars. It's me, MT, and this is a breakdown of Rick and Morty Season 6, Episode 3, titled Bethic Instinct, the Thanksgiving episode where the turkey isn't the only bird getting their gut stuffed and eaten with the family. Oh my god, it's disgusting. <laughs> Between this and the incest baby, Morty and Summer are gonna need so, so much therapy. Let's be honest. <laughs> but that's why they paid Dr. Wong the big bucks. Let's get into the dirty details you might have missed in this wonderfully awkward episode brought to you courtesy of the Venusian wine. Hooray! But first, do not forget to hit up NewRockstarsMerch.com to pick up our newest, latest obsession shirts inspired by both House of the Dragon and She-Hulk, and they're not going to last forever, so hit up NewRockstarsMerch.com today so that you can be rocking some cool t-shirts in style. All right, so the episode is titled Bethic Instinct, which is a play on the 1992 movie Basic Instinct, which is a movie that features a bisexual character named Beth who has an intimate sexual history with the film's main suspect, Catherine, who has a questionable, potentially murderous past, which kind of mirrors Earth best relationship with the more quicker to murder space Beth. And the episode starts with Morty setting up a poop lickian game pod XL, which is a slight mishmash parody of Nintendo's GameCube and 3DX XL consoles. And apparently a console that allows the users to play an infinite amount of ultra realistic games like a video game version of Interdimensional Cable. But if you notice here, the console glows pink like the crystallized xanthanite that Rick installed into the family cable box so that they can watch Interdimensional Cable. A crystal with the capability of messing with time and alternate timelines, which is why it is mainly referred to as a time crystal. Rick uses this crystal in the season to premiere a Rickle in Time when Rick tries to repair the splintered realities caused by Morty and Summer's uncertainties. A crystal that time cops like Schleamy Pants will arrest you for as they are highly illegal to have, so having Space Beth carelessly give this to Morty is very in line with her badass nature. Then Rick smashes into the glass in turkey form before reverting back and saying, Pardon the interruption, we are once again in the federal clear. Which is a callback to season five, episode six, Thanksploitation Spectacular, when Rick and Morty turn themselves into turkeys to get pardons from the president. And it appears that Rick has succeeded yet again. And it kind of sounds like Rick has done this annually for a long time, because when Rick tries to bail on both Beths, one of them notes, get out of I here. heard you smack the glass, Dad. If you bail, I'll disown yeah, you. I implying that Beth is well familiar with Rick's Thanksgiving turkey Dracula pardon shenanigans. And at Jerry's anti-nudist request before dinner, Rick presses a button on his watch that causes his outfit to emerge from underneath his skin, much like Iron Man's extremist armor from the comics, which is yet another Iron Man reference from Rick after he pretends not to know who Iron Man is. I don't, I don't have a helmet like that Avengers guy did. In the season six premiere. And after dinner, Earth Beth offers Jerry's man cave as a place for Space Beth to sleep. To which Space Beth replies, Oh, that's okay, I'll sleep in my car. It's got a TARDIS thing going on bigger on the inside. Which is a reference to my favorite TV show of all time, Doctor Who, a show about a space nerd who travels space and time in a blue police box called the TARDIS that is much bigger on the inside than the outside. It's bigger on the inside. Is it? I noticed. And Rick not liking Doctor Who type shenanigans is also very much in line with his character in the Rick and Morty comics, which you should definitely read, by the way, because in the very first issue of those comic series, it is very clear that he has a hatred for the Doctor Who parody, Professor Talk, the time detective. He really does not like time trouble. And when Space Beth fixes Earth Beth's back problem, I couldn't help but think that this is a shout out to the Spider-Man No Way Home moment when Andrew Garfield cracks his Tobey Maguire variant's back. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. And both Beth sip wine that is from Venus, Venusian wine, which is a planet named after the Roman goddess of love, sex, and desire, which could potentially serve to explain why the Venusian language is literally just French, one of the most romantic languages in the world. See, la parole est à vous. Laissez-la déchirer. And potentially, as well as the entire Beth romance of this episode, as the wine could have some love potion-esque attributes, which might serve to explain why Rick puts the Venusian wine in his secret pocket reality wine shelf and then garbage disposed of the key. He's just like, it's too powerful. This, this alcohol is too powerful. It makes my daughter into a lesbian for herself. A secret shelf that also had a liquid with a little baby Morty in it. This could be what Rick drinks to camouflage his brainwaves with Morty waves whenever Morty can't tag along with him. See, when, when, when a Rick is with a Morty, the genius waves get canceled out by the, uh, <clears throat> Morty waves. We love backstory here on New Rockstars, and some of our favorite character reveals are all about who's related to who. And here's the thing, it's fun when it's fictional characters' family trees that you're digging into, but it can be really frustrating when it's your own family tree. And that's what my heritage is for. My heritage is the leading global service for family history research and DNA testing. It's trusted by 90 million users because my heritage not only makes building your family tree easy and fun, it also gives you access to powerful tools that can help you research your family history and flesh out that family tree. Here at New Rockstars, 
Zack used My Heritage to find out more about his family and learn that his great great grandfather was born in the Treviso region of northern Italy in 1853. No joke, his name was Luigi. And they also had census documents with his relatives' names on them from 1903. And he's super excited to continue to learn more about his family history. My Heritage is home to more than 18 billion easily searchable historical records. 18 billion! And My Heritage also has advanced AI technologies for repairing, enhancing, colorizing, and animating historical photos. So if you got a photo of your great grandparents that could use a little TLC, My Heritage has got you covered. Sign up for a 14 day free trial and enjoy all the amazing features My Heritage has to offer. And if you decide to continue your subscription, click the link below and get a 50% discount. Rick, Morty, and Beth then play an unnecessarily realistic game pod version of Asteroid for the Atari, where they end up floating in empty space doing nothing, with the ability to leave a message for their fictional in-game loved ones in case they die, like Iron Man did for Pepper in Endgame as he was floating through the void of space. And when Earth Beth gives Space Beth a massage outside when they can't sleep, Earth Beth calls Space Beth a space cowboy, which is likely a reference to Cowboy Bebop, a sci-fi anime that ends each episode with the words, see you space cowboy. I really love that show. You should watch it. Probably not the Netflix version. And when Summer decides to stress play video games after her mom's almost kiss, her and Rick are playing a street roaming Street Fighter parody called Getting to a Street Fight, which is hilarious considering that the new Street Fighter 6 game has street roaming capabilities as well. And apparently the Rick and Morty universe has space whales, much like one of the most underrated Disney movies of all time that definitely needs a live action remake, Treasure Planet, a space whale that Rick is gutting to make a controller. Please don't do animal abuse for video games. But as he's doing this, Rick extends a robot arm to grab a saw, furthering the Reed Richards parallels that the show likes to make with Rick's character, much like the Council of Ricks is pretty much a parody of the Council of Reeds from the Marvel comics. And as both Beth space vape on the roof after a quick self-love mouth session, they lie on two snow angels holding hands that they made symbolizing their unity. But what's super interesting here is that when they blow out their smoke, whatever is currently at their mind at the moment is what takes shape. So Space Beth blows out a middle finger at the thought of giving the family an explanation for what they're doing, and Earth Beth blows out a Jerry shape while thinking about her marriage. Thought that was pretty fun. We then see Summer and Morty playing a hilarious realistic variant of Final Fantasy VII, where Cloud just can't get it up. He just can't, he can't do it. Better get a blue chew, Cloud. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm talking about his buster sword that realistically should not be easy to lift and swing at all. Have you ever seen the size of that thing? Like, you, you need to like be... I don't know, Terry Crews to, to even lift that like an inch off the ground. And when Rick busts the bath smooching in his hollow deck, he directly references the San Junipero episode of Black Mirror, one of the most popular episodes of the series that follows two lesbian lovers in a simulated reality. Then Space Beth immediately threatens Earth Beth's family by saying that she has all the weapons from the Predator franchise, which I thought was pretty cool. And I hope we see more of those weapons in action, hopefully to kill Naruto the baby out in space. <laughs> But anyways, when Space Beth spills the beans on her secret masturbate dates with Earth Beth, Jerry activates his latent pill bug shell that apparently activates during periods of emotional distress, much like real pill bugs do when they feel danger. Rick installed this when they were both drunk together one time the same day he got a tattoo of both him and Jerry as eagles on his pale white ass. Look at that ass, so pale so gray. With Jerry's face and wings looking way less confident than Rick's, a man who is way more than familiar with being a bird. He apparently loves it, like a lot. He, I think Rick obviously just wants to be a bird or a pickle, but mostly a bird. Rick then heads back to the game pod with his kids very high to play a realistic text-based video game about being stuck in a forest, a style of game much like 1976's Colossal Cave that was very popular in the past before all them fancy polygons you kids love hit the scenes. All these polygons and video games, I can't even handle it. Back in my day Tomb Raider had <laughs> I can't make a Tomb Raider. And I really love how Morty says, How old are we? We've had a million Thanksgivings. Which is basically Morty breaking the fourth wall by calling out how cartoon families like The Simpsons or Family Guy or even American Dad never really age despite experiencing the same holidays over and over again. However, this could also be a subtle reference to how Morty lived billions of lives in the last episode when Summer did a die hard to save him. He literally experienced billions of Thanksgivings himself. And when the Beths force Rick to whip out the memory wiping machine from Morty's mind blowers so they can forget about their whole affair, Rick says, <laughs> You guys are having the eternal sunshine, all the multiplicity porn scenes from your minds. Yep, they sounds right. Me. Which are references to both 2004's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, a movie where Jim Carrey memory wipes a past relationship, and 1996's Multiplicity, a movie where Michael Keaton clones himself to try to be more efficient in his job and family life. And I thought it was hilarious how Rick calls Jerry a cuckold husband to the Beths because it is very much some foreshadowing to the threesome that occurs at the very end of the episode to the hilarious horror of 
the children. And speaking of, when Morty is asked what he's thankful for, he says the Discovery Channel, which is a quite timely reference considering that Warner Brothers and Discovery just merged and they own the rights to Rick and Morty. Um, so thank God for Monopolies because they made a quick joke about it. Ha ha ha, sorry Batgirl, ha ha ha. And at the very end of the episode, I thought it was a really nice touch how Space Bat mentions Morty and Summer's incest baby Naruto from season five, episode four, because it kind of felt like a slight jab at the kids for judging her and Earth Beth's relationship and what they did. Come on guys, uh, don't forget about your incest baby. This isn't that weird. And finally, we have the return of the Jerry Beret daycare center from season two, episode two, Morty Night Run, when Jerry returns to try to kiss himself like his wife did. Typical Jerry move. Part of me does wonder how Jerry even got there considering that Rick's portal gun got hijacked at the end of the season five finale, but the Jerry Beret does exist on a cross temporal asteroid, Ferp Rock, that is sort of a nexus point of all realities. So theoretically, Jerry could have just flown there with Rick's ship on autopilot. But that is it for this breakdown of season six, episode three of Rick and Morty. What'd you guys think of the episode? What would you even call this? Is it masturbation? Is it incest? Let us know in the comment section below. And of course, do not forget to hit up NewRockstarsMerch.com so you can find all of our amazing shirts and amazing nerd gear over there. And those new obsession shirts are not gonna last forever. So pick them up today. You can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter if you wanna see me tweet some weird shit and really fun theories. But more importantly, you can follow NewRockstars wherever we are on the social media. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Ta-da-ta-da. All right, cool beans. Thank you.